about two months ago, I did a video on NextUI, which is a MinUI fork for the TrimUI brick. Here's the link in the corner here if you're interested. I wanted to do a follow-up video as the dev team added new features, but this thing got updates almost daily for the better part of two months. Things have finally calmed down with version 5.5, so I thought I'd do a quick follow-up to see what's been added, and if NextUI is still the way to go on the TrimUI brick. So when we last left our story, it was the end of March, and NextUI was on version 2.4. They had just added some basic components, like a game switcher, LED controls, a fix to screen tearing, and deep sleep mode. Wi-Fi and advanced systems were teased, but they weren't available yet. Much like that sleazy Senator Palpatine, I've been watching the NextUI GitHub page with great interest. But unlike the cruel Emperor Palpatine, I'm not plotting the overthrow of the Republic. No, I'm just gonna show you how to get the latest and greatest version of NextUI on your brick. So, how do you update NextUI? Updating NextUI, much like installing NextUI, is probably the simplest custom firmware process you'll ever do. You grab the latest zip file from the GitHub and then unzip it into the root of your SD card. That's it. If you want to know how to do a fresh install, just check my earlier video, but it's, it's pretty much the same process. You dump a zip file on the root of your card and you start the device. Start our device right now. You see, you still have my custom boot logo from last time. And if you're updating, there's a blink and you'll miss it three seconds of installing text and then you're up and running. NextUI on its own is great, but there are a ton of pack files with goodies and updates and tools. You can download them all individually, but with so many different pack files that need to go in different subfolders, you might make a goof. Luckily, someone decided to goof-proof this process, and that someone is man, name of Jose Gonzalez. If you go to github.com slash Jose Gonzalez slash Pacman, you'll find two things. One, a hilarious pun on Pac-Man, and two, a comprehensive and up-to-date collection of all the best tools and emulators already pre-configured to deploy into the correct folders on your SD card. Just like installing or updating NextUI itself, in order to get all the Pac-Man goodness on here, you just have to extract the zip to the root of the SD card. Easy peasy. So what can you do with all these updated tools? Well, since they added Wi-Fi to NextUI a while back, you see I got my Wi-Fi connected, you can do a lot of cool stuff wirelessly. First off, since NextUI has box art now, there's a box art scraper in here. It's called Artwork Scraper, and it's gonna do a quick search of your ROM directories, then it's gonna allow you to download box art for entire systems at a time. I added some DS games, so we're gonna to try to scrape our DS stuff. I'm gonna cache, copying, Copied, okay, that was easy. Go into our Nintendo DS here, lo and behold, besides that cache file, we have box art for all of our stuff. That's pretty cool. In addition to being cool, it's also quick, it's easy, and you get box art while keeping in line with some of the minimalistic elements of MinUI, pretty cool. There's also an OT8 update pack available. Since this custom firmware is updated so often, you're gonna to wanna to keep your system up to date. Gone are the days of taking your SD card out like a caveman, no! Instead, there's this super easy to use updater, just pings the GitHub and it downloads and extracts the latest update. If you're current, like I am, it'll let you know that as well. Super simple, super easy, super cool. There's also a pack store where you can download the latest versions of your favorite add-ons or grab some new ones. This store, plus the OTA, box scraping, and FTP backend stuff I'm not even really covering, means you'll never really need to mess with the SD card again. You can update and tweak everything wirelessly, which is super cool. I kind of poo-pooed this sort of stuff until I started using it extensively on my 35XXSP with MuOS, and now I, I kind of lean on it. It's a super helpful tool when you just want to add one or two new games from your smartphone and then scrape the art. You don't have to pull your SD card out. You don't have to fiddle around. You do it all on here. It takes a couple seconds. Like, look. Heck, I can install Moonlight on here if I want. Let's give it a shot. That was fast. Speaking of games, let's talk about the new games you can play on here with custom emulation packs. I'm talking about N64, Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, even some PSP. All of these worked on stock, 
but they weren't available on the last version of Next UI I tested. Well, they're back and they're spectacular, especially since the all winner A133P inside of this means you can play these systems without a ton of real issues outside of the usual suspects, like Cruising USA doesn't run very well, because Cruising USA never really runs very well. Let's bust into some of these systems. Let's go N64. If you hold down R2 while you're starting these, you get to this options screen here in a second, and you can change your controller layout. So I set my D-pad to joystick for F0 because it's a joystick game. Whee. Steady zoo. Now this isn't going to be ideal for all your N64 games because you don't have enough buttons. But it is pretty cool that you can remap your D-pad to a joystick if you want to. You can also have it so if you press one of the function keys up here, you can toggle as you go through the game. Super cool. Let's get some Dreamcast going here. You know what? Let's put on my comfort grip. There's also a fast forward in here if you really want to zoom through your intro scenes. Put it in drive, dummy. Got PSP here, Crisis Core, which is a kind of a confusing game. I always wanted it to be like Final Fantasy 7 2, but it's more of an ARPG. But it's also pretty cool, but I digress. Uh oh. I don't know what this means. Yeah. Resolved by murdering that monster. Oh god. Alright. Oh hey! Since the function buttons are mappable now, you can go in and change your controls and make uh heck, let's say fast forward. Fast forward is now this button. Look at that. Pretty cool. So now I can press this button and zoom through Final Fantasy Tactics. Pretty cool. Shoot this weird monster in its side. Get wrecked. And all your options are there with the menu button. You can save and then quit. There's also a Portmaster pack available and it's pretty easy to use. Connect to Wi Fi, open up Portmaster. The first time you use it, it's going to download the latest updates. Uh, it'll download updates pretty much every couple days because this thing's updated so much. And then it's the same port master you'd see on any other device. You can download a bunch of ready-to-run games here if you want, or you can install some of the more complicated games, but you will need to go in and copy game files to the correct locations. It's not something I went super deep into, but I could see myself using this for a ton of console -y ports, like Ninja Turtles or some of those awesome Super Metroid hacks. As you can see, there are a ton of other tools on here, but I wanted it to be kind of a quicker video after I did a 40 minute long feature last week, so I'll leave it to you to check out the Pac-Man GitHub and see everything that's available. Well, Gary, it's time for What Did We Learn? And we learned that if NextUI was a great custom firmware for your TrimUI brick, or heck, even your Smart Pro, then it's certainly an even better option with all of the latest updates. In addition to adding Wi-Fi, which is clutch as hell, there are a wide, wide variety of tools that leverage Wi-Fi, so you'll hardly ever need to take the SD card out again. And there's hardly anything missing from NextUI at this point, besides retro achievements, and that's on their to-do list. It might be a big to-do, since you're not exactly running RetroArch on here, but if anyone can do it, they probably will. Oh, and if you're wondering about this black thing I have on the bottom of the brick in some of the shots, it's my Game Boy Color style grip slash case it goes on the bottom and it gives you that classic late 90s nintendo badonkadonk but it also slides 
over the screen so you can chuck this in a bag and not have to worry about getting scratches from your keys. Pretty slick little print job from our local buddies at JC Studio. All in all though, NextUI was a really cool upgraded MinUI experience and it's gotten much, much better. I really like DS stuff in particular on this beautiful screen, especially those Game Boy Advance 2.0 style games that don't need touch or really need the second screen at all. And with NextUI, you've really just expanded your gameplay abilities while still keeping a lot of that core MinUI experience. It's the best of both worlds. If you thought this video was the best, of both worlds. Then remember to like and subscribe and all that jazz. We finally hit 75k and now we're zooming to 100k. Don't you want to be part of Mr. Zoo's crazy ride? I know you do. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.